Welcome my friends, new guitar players and those who are frustrated with their progress. Let me tell you after 40 years of playing and teaching, these are the five most important things that every beginner guitar player must know. You'll use 100% of this for the rest of your playing. So let's start off. Practice, number one. Seems like it shouldn't have to be said, but it is. It is the only thing the only thing that's going to make you a great player, it's the difference between a mediocre player and a great player, it's practice, okay? Now, a lot of people think, no, that's not true. I need to be born with a certain amount of talent and this, that, and the other thing. You can think whatever you want. I promise you that's going to, um, that's gonna really wreck things for you. If you think that way, I wouldn't even get started because absolutely, 100%, guitar is all about practice. And it's a good thing for us to say this and to know it and to really, in the beginning, understand this because literally anything that you desire to do on this instrument, you can do if you have the proper steps and if you do the practice, okay? So number one, practice cannot be avoided. It's the only thing that's gonna work for you. If, you don't, if you're not into practicing, don't pick this thing up. It's just gonna frustrate the hell out of you, okay? That's number one. Number two, your hands are not too small, they're not too big, okay? Plenty of videos on YouTube that will prove this. Uh, it really comes down to practice again, but having hands that are too small, my hands are, are, are not giant hands. I've taught students that have much smaller hands, I've taught students that have much bigger hands, and there was nothing after teaching over 10,000 one-on-one lessons, there's literally no evidence that I saw that hand size had anything to do with playing the guitar well, okay? It really truly has to do going back to that practice, all right? Your fingers will hurt. There is a, a, a beginner stage of the fingertips hurting and, and the muscles hurting just a little bit, getting sore and what have you. You're doing something new, you're learning a new language, so just Accept that as part of the gauntlet, right? Part of this journey. How to hold the guitar, okay? So we had to cover that other stuff first. It's absolutely essential. Uh, knowing the psychology of this is 90% of everything you're going to be doing. And if you don't have that as a basis, you're gonna fail. But now getting into the actual playing of the guitar, we still are talking about some basics. How to hold the guitar is absolutely everything. People say, oh, what do you mean how to hold the guitar? I just hold it on my leg. Yeah, get it, right? But there are a couple other things that we need to talk about. There's a couple different ways that we can hold the guitar. Number one, if you can hold this on your dominant leg, right? Which is what most people do. It's called the folk style of playing. Or you can hold it like this, which is the more classical style. This is gonna give you more support. It's not right, it's not wrong, it's just different. And so you may wanna try that. If you're playing classical, uh, when I was playing classical guitar more, I always held my guitar like that, unless I was playing electric or rock or something like that, and then I would go the folk style. This is a little bit shaky, because you really Really only have two points of or maybe three points of holding the guitar you got your thigh you got your body and you got your arm whereas opposed to the classical style you've got four right you've got the arm you've got your two legs and you've got your chest so uh, there's a little bit more support there it's not as wobbly uh, reason being that that's a problem sometimes in the beginning is the beginning of the guitar, guitar player is trying to grapple the neck trying to hold it in, pl in place they're leaning over the guitar is moving forward and we're talking about the beginner stages so it's kind of like uh, putting a baby who's learning to walk on ice skates or something like that it's like that would be really cruel because now you're putting you're throwing in another obstacle in there so it's important to identify this and to understand that without the proper posture you're starting off not on the right foot, okay? So I would suggest trying the classical stance at least at first until you can get your uh, proper picking and proper fretting down, and then you can move it over to the other leg, okay? So you'll see pro guitar players playing like this all the time. It's because they've gotten used to this now, and they've got great technique, and it's not an issue for them. But for the beginner guitar player, I would suggest going with the classical stance just because it's starting you off on an easier, um, it's setting you off on an easier road, if you will. And again, 
when you're comfortable, you can always get to the more comfortable position of playing folk style. All right, number four is basic picking techniques and specifically something what I call the pick rest. And I borrowed this from the classical style of playing guitar where we did something called a rest stroke. And I found it to be indispensable for my students in really learning proper pick control. It's super easy to do. And once you get it, you got it. It's not like you have to practice it over and over and over again. Once you get it, you get it. And it goes like this. What you wanna do is you wanna take the pick and starting on the sixth string here, what you want to do is pick, but you don't want to have your hand go out to the air. That's not the purpose of the pick rest. What you want to do is you want to take the pick and push it down to where the pick rests on the next string below it. Okay, now for most people, this is not an issue at first, but many people, just this basic concept, they don't get, they're like, I'm doing it. No, you're not doing it. You're just kind of picking out into the air. The whole point of this is to rest the pick on the string below the one that you're picking. There's many reasons why you would want to do this, but the main reason is pick control. And especially if you have a problem doing this. In fact, the more problems that you have doing this, the more you're going to gain from this. So if you're having issues with it, great. If you're not having issues with it, you're probably beyond that already. So what you want to do is you want to do this with the sixth string. You want to do this with the fifth string. You want to do this with all the strings. The first string isn't going to help because you don't have a string to rest upon. To ramp it up, make it more difficult, try two strings at a time. So I'm picking six and five, resting on four. And you want it to sound as much uh, as in unison timing wise as possible as opposed to do it all at once and then go through the iterations of two strings throughout the whole guitar and then you want to do three strings and I'm resting my pick there on that third string doing this is going to allow you to have really good control of your pick. And if you do this for, I don't know, half hour or so, the very first time, you're gonna be great at this. You may not even need to do it that much. Number five is basic fretting techniques. So understanding how to fret the guitar, understanding how to pick the guitar, hold the guitar, these are all things that you're going to be using 100% of the time from here on out, all right, as a guitar player. So these are the foundations. And I don't know about you, but if I was gonna build a building, if I was gonna chintz on anything, I might chintz on the paint, right? But I'm not gonna chintz on the foundation of the building because that determines the, the construct of it and everything else. I'm not gonna chintz on anything, but I'm definitely not gonna chintz on the foundation of that house, right? So you don't wanna do that either with your playing. You wanna make sure that you really know this stuff. So let's talk about the basics of fretting. So absolutely important. You're gonna be doing it for a bit on chords, on solos, on scales, on everything, okay? So, few basic things very, very quickly here is you wanna play on the tips of your fingers. This is not the tip of your finger. This is the tip of your finger. So if you take your hand and you look at it like that, that, those are the tips of your fingers. For my students, I used to take a Sharpie and put a little black dot on their fingers just to remind them. So if they're looking at their, hands while they're playing and that dot staring up at them like an eyeball, they know they're playing wrong already. So that dot needs to go on the string. Awkward? Sure it is, it's awkward at first. That's okay, that's why we practice. Back to number one, right? So number one, playing on that tip of your finger. Also, you wanna play as close to the fret as possible. Most beginners think, well, I wanna play right in the middle. Nope, you wanna play close to the fret and if you do this at first, if you're kind of hyper aware of it at first, it's a habit that you won't have to think of later on. You'll just establish a great habit. But at first you have to think a little bit. So if I wanna play the second fret, I'm gonna use my second finger. If it's the third fret, I'll use my third finger. Fourth fret, I'll use my fourth finger. You wanna play on that fingertip and you wanna play right behind the fret. Another silver bullet for helping you be a great guitar player for your solos, for all things, is to curl your fingers. The flatter they are, the more problems you're gonna have, especially when it comes to chords, but really when it comes to everything. A great guitar player has 
those fingers curl. Then again, if you establish these habits in the beginning when it's awkward anyhow, you're going to, it's all awkward no matter what you're doing, okay? Bad technique or good technique. Uh, adding the good technique makes it a teeny bit more awkward, but I can promise you it pays off in spades, okay? Now, friends, if you need more detail of all this stuff, my gift to you is 36 of the best videos that I've ever done that every single good guitar player on the planet should be required to watch and I give it to you all absolutely free. Click right here, friends, uh, description of the video, it's there too. I'm here to help you. I'm passionate about your success. Thumbs up, subscribe, leave your comments below. I'm here for you. All right, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.